This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. It's the hottest TV of 1994. Sorry, uh, 2018. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. The various TV networks recently held their archaic Upfronts event, where they try to sell advertisers on their new shows before they they air, a.k.a. Upfront. And a.k.a. New. Yeah. It also means the networks made their final calls on which of their existing shows were renewed or canceled. So let's start with the cancellations. Uh, and uh, I've noted the ones that actually went a single season or less. <laughs> so on ABC, they canceled... Um, Alex Incorporated, which was a single season. Boy Band. I don't even know what that I, was. I, that came and went. That must have been like one airing on a Saturday or something. <laughs> uh, the Crossing and Deception, which were both one season. Designated Survivor, which is looking for a new home. We'll see. Kevin Probably Saves the World. Marvel's Inhumans and The Mayor were all single season. The Middle, Once Upon a Time, Quantico, Scandal, and 10 Days in the Valley and The Toy Box, which were both a uh, single season. Over on CBS, 9 JKL, a single season, Code Black, Kevin Can Wait, Living Biblic- Biblically, and Me, Myself, and I, both single season, Scorpion, Superior Donuts, Wisdom of, of the Crowd, that was a single season, and I think that's the one we called originally. Yes. That was going to be the first one to go, and it pretty much was. And... Zoo. And then on the CW, Life Sentence, single season, The Originals, and Valor. Valor, single season. And they have much fewer cancellations because they have fewer shows. Right. Uh, Fox canceled, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Mm. <gasps> but wait, stay tuned. The Exorcist, LA to Vegas, which was a single season, The Last Man on Earth, Lucifer, The Mick, and Shots Fired, another single season show. NBC canceled The Brave, a single season show. Great news, which we kind of liked. Yeah. The Night Shift and Rise and Taken, which were both single season shows. And then all the other shows were renewed. Now, Fox uh, has actually replaced Clayne Crawford with Sean William Scott on Lethal Weapon because apparently he behaved really badly on set. Do you know, are they replacing him in the character a la Darren? Or? As, as I understand it, it's going to be the guy's brother. Okay. Uh, they also picked up the long-canceled Last Man Standing, part of the Roseanne effect of conservative TV, because mm-hmm. apparently they're learning the wrong lesson from that, which is what networks always do. Yes. Meanwhile, at NBC... Brooklyn Nine Nine got a pickup from it from Fox. Woohoo! So we'll get probably one more season. Of I'm that. guessing. Yeah. And then Will and Grace actually got two more seasons. So let's move on to the new series introduced at the upfronts because that's always the best part. Yeah. As always, you'll see fill in the blank returns to TV. Different shows with the same concept. Last year it was military drama. This year it's remakes, remakes, remakes. Stars, who the networks insist we like over and over again. <laughs> and we're skipping uh, most of the shows announced for mid-season, as many of them may never actually make it to air. Right. And starting on ABC, A Million Little Things. A group of friends decide to change their lives after the death of one of them, This Is Us Much, mm, Yeah. Ron Livingston, and James Rode star. The kids are all right. It's a family show set in the 70s involving eight sons. So eight is enough, plus the Wonder Years and or the Goldbergs thrown in. Yeah. It'll air in the post-Roseanne slot, so it could do pretty well, although I didn't think much of the preview. The Rookie. Nathan Fillion returns to TV after about 10 minutes. He plays the oldest police cadet. He's playing 40. He's actually 47. A castle creator is involved. And what we both thought after we saw the preview was that it's not a dramedy that they're playing it up to be. The preview made it look like a straight drama. Right. And just in case you're interested, the LAPD does take 40-year-olds as I see. As cadets. Do they take 47-year-olds? Well, <laughs> you can always play much younger. Single Parents from the producers of New Girl, a comedy about, well, single parents. 
Brad Garrett, Leighton Meister, and Taryn Killam star. The Alec Baldwin Show. So ABC is going to roll the dice on a primetime talk show. It is buried on Sundays at 10 p.m., but it is still technically primetime. It actually pre uh, previewed after the Oscars in March, and then mm -hmm. we didn't hear anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it's based on his Here's the Thing podcast with doing these long-form interviews. So on CBS, we have FBI. Dick Wolf plus a good wife writer equals a procedural that may run for years or disappear completely. Jeremy Sisto, Missy Peregrim, and Connie Nielsen star. And Missy Peregrim is one of those, you're going to like this actress. Yeah. So we're going to keep and putting her in shows. She's a likable actress. I like her. But, but she, she does very little luck. Yeah. Maybe this time's the, the charm. Charm. God friended me. Brandon Michael Hall, formerly the mayor, and someone that the networks has decided is hot, stars as a guy who gets a friend request from God. He helps people whom the Lord suggests via tweets. Violet Keene, previously Jesse Quick on The Flash, mm -hmm. becomes his sidekick. Oh, and the guy's an atheist. Really? <laughs> it's this year's high concept show and will most likely crash and burn. But it could be another good place. You never know. You never know. Probably not, but yeah. it could be. Yeah. Happy Together, mild-mannered accountant Damon Wayans Jr. and wife have a house guest, a pop star client. Apparently, a late, late show producer had this happen with Harry Styles, who's also an exec producer. It's a multi-camera comedy, so wackiness ensues. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't hardly get through the preview. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. Magnum P.I., the same guy who brought you the Hawaii Five-0 and MacGyver reboots, brings you the man with the mustache. Except the new guy, Jay Hernandez, his mustache and charisma free. We also get a female Higgins. We get a Rick and a TC. I'm sure the CBS audience will eat this up. And I'm wondering, is this the first time the star of an existing show, Tom Selleck, who's on Blue Bloods, is watching someone remake their best-known series on the same network while they sit on the sidelines? <laughs> That's just weird. Yeah. And Murphy Brown, another reach back to the time broadcast networks were relevant. Looks like the entire main cast, save Charles Kimbrough and the late Pat Corley, are returning, as is the original creator, Diane English. Jake McDormand joins the veterans as Murphy's now adult son and also in TV news. There's not even a preview yet, which means this got a green light without a pilot. The Neighborhood. Max Greenfield of New Girl stars as the head of a Midwest family who moves to a black L.A. neighborhood. It's not a good sign that the pilot starred Joss Lawson. So it's basically after the pilot went, okay, we need to fix something. Yeah. Cedric the Entertainer co-stars. It is from the makers of The Big Bang Theory. Mm. Who, who know a whole lot about black life in a uh, city. I guess. Uh. <laughs> On the CW, uh, this network is expanding to Sunday nights, which is giving them two extra hour-long slots. So we're going to get a couple more shows. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is All-American. A high school football player in South L.A. is recruited to Beverly Hills 90210? Something like that. Tay Diggs plays his new coach. Well, it's on the CW and not superhero-based or a reboot spinoff, so... And speaking of a reboot, Charmed. Jane the Virgin's writers reimagine the Halliwell sisters. There's a lot of talk about the show being fierce and feminist. Except that, in the preview, they're being led uh -huh. by a man. Hmm. The original cast is not happy about all this. I, ca I guess there have been various efforts to do a sequel with the original cast that never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going on social media and they ain't happy. Yeah. And then Legacies, a spin-out from Vampire Diaries and the Originals involving the offspring of the original characters. It's got a fall slot, but there's very little info about it. Over on Fox. Now, this may be the last year that Fox has actual scripted programming, mm -hmm. assuming that either the Disney or the Comcast takeover occurs. And as we've talked about in a previous episode, Fox is going to lose their home studio, mm -hmm. meaning... They won't have an, an in-house source to generate scripted programming, and a lot of people assume Fox TV will go reality, sports, and news. Yeah, well, if these are examples of what their studio is coming up with, that might not be a bad thing. 
The Cool Kids. Retirement community residents David Allen Greer, Leslie Jordan, and Martin Mull have to deal with newbie Vicki Lawrence. This really seems like a CBS show that got misplaced. It happens sometimes. Rel. Divorced dad Lil Rel Howery from Get Out and The Carmichael Show tries to be a good father to his kids. Sinbad co-stars as his dad. They're clearly going for the Tyler Perry demo on this. Mm -hmm. On NBC... We have Manifest, another high-concept show. Plane passengers have a bumpy flight, then land five years later. It's from the creator of Mysteries of Laura, so... <laughs> New Amsterdam. Hey, a medical drama where a maverick doctor wants to do things a new way. We've never seen that before. Ryan Eggold from Blacklist stars as the maverick. Freema Ag Agyeman, Doctor Who's Martha Jones, co-stars. Mm -hmm. TV's Angel of Death, Tyler Labine, is also in the mix. <laughs> Expect this to disappear like a TARDIS. I feel bad. A working Indian mom and wife is trying to have it all, and insanity ensues. The Soraya Blue stars, Amy Poehler is the exec producer. This screams ABC series that didn't get picked up, Yes, though. no question. This was, was going to go between, you know, blackish Black and, and fresh off the boat, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. So... We'll see what happens. You know, things could change between now and September. That's true. <laughs> and they often do. And things can get pulled after their first episode as well. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, you can always listen to our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics. Instead, it's on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>